All right, well, we have got a big one on our hands. We are headed to the UCCU Center in Orem, Utah, the return to the fairgrounds of showdown fights from many years ago. Lego ruling alongside Zach Partridge for this fight week. And Zach, this one is just stacked top to bottom, and we're going to a historic place too. Yeah, I mean, stacked top to bottom, but there's also, we're kicking off the card with, what, seven debuters? Yeah, seven I debuters. Mean, what a cool stage for them to kick off their MMA careers where a lot of legends were born. I mean, really cool. It's like, it's where Mike Jones made his pro debut, right? Like, and now he's main eventing it. Like there's a, there's a lot of cool storylines and, and a lot of really good, exciting fights on this card. All right. Well, let's kick into that Dorian Ishmael facing off against Max Taylor, Max Taylor. This is second card in a row where we're going to have brothers on the same card. This will be yeah. the third time in fierce history that this is happening, but back to back here in this one. Yeah, um, Max is one of my teammates at one hit. He's coming along, and uh, you know the, we, the opportunity came up for him to fight on the card with his brother. And uh, Dorian Ishmael is a guy that um, follows MMA, watches MMA, trains a little bit of MMA, and wanted to experience a fight. Um, they're both pretty green, and um, you know some of those fights are can t turn out to be some of the most exciting. So um, I think we'll get a, I think they'll kick off the night with a with a pretty exciting fight. I'd be very surprised if, uh, if that one went to a decision. Yeah. Dorian Ishmael, the first of three independents on the card, another one, Cade Vermillion, who we actually have a little bit of, we actually kind of have a mutual connection with him facing off against Ethan Fleming out of Tooele martial arts Academy. He'll be the first of three for that camp. Yeah. Um, Cade's been training, um, works for one of our sponsors, glow pop and, um, and wanted to get on a card. And so, uh, what a good opportunity for him and, you know, um, Ethan Fleming, you know, uh, Tooele martial arts Academy is kind of getting active and going and, and Ethan's part of that. And, you know, like you said, we'll have three people on the card and, and you're starting to see them, their name pop up more competing wise, um, shout out to them. They did really good in Naga last weekend. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, good, good for Twill. They've always had a really good team and a really strong camp. Um, their coach is Keith uh, Asbury. Like, I think he's a phenomenal coach. I've gone out there and trained with him before. And I really like his stuff. I, I'm, I think it'll be a really fun, exciting fight. All right, we'll move down 10 pounds to 135 pounds. Aiden Eglar facing off against Luis Falbell. Luis coming in from Gladiator Fight Academy. As for Aiden, he comes out of the most popular gym in the state of Utah being Aguima. Well, you know, and, and this is another one where I think it's it's really interesting. Um, we have the interesting dynamic, just like we've had with a lot of the Jeremy Horn um, versus um, Excite MMA guys. Um, Agima and Gladiator Fight Academy now has that common connection with Cole Schaefer, who's training in both rooms. So um, who's, so it's, it's kind of interesting when we're starting to see this more with the cross training. Um, Gladiator, they've had some, you know, re really fun, you know, Chris Falau, came out of there last year. Cole Schaefer got a big win in October last year coming out of their gym. So I'm, I'm excited to see Luis. He's anxious to, you know, he, he's like me, he's doing it for the older guys, man. He's 35 making his, making his walk. And, uh, and uh, I'm excited to see, uh, see him. I, I think it's great when you see these guys find MMA later in life and, and, uh, and get in there. And then, uh, you know, Aiden, I think, uh, you know, Agima, like you said, one of the, they're the most active gym in the state. So that's what I should have said. Um, I apologize. I misspoke. Yeah. Popular, uh, popular, like well-known, you know, I mean, they, but they are, you know, they've, they've kind of established themselves as kind of the, the hub and, and if you will, almost like the pit elevated back was in the day um, where they're, you know, kind of open to everybody creating a very cool culture there. And Aiden's a part of that. All right, we will move over to our last debuter to walk. Every fighter we've talked about thus far is a debuter. The last one will be Julian Gomez, another fighter out of Tooele Martial Arts, facing off against Ben Evans, an independent out of Payson, uh, Utah. We will have to see how he does. He fought on your card just a couple of months ago, getting back in there after that fight against Toa Meredith. Man, he's just a guy that wants to fight, and uh, he's kind of that guy that he's like, he kind of is bouncing around weight classes. He is an independent guy, uh, you know, but... Dude, you know, me and you have had private conversations about Toa Meredith and how good we think he is, you know, and, um, you know, Toa is good and he's very exciting, but man, uh, you know, Ben, Ben was exciting and he, he, he 
I think he started the fight with a flying knee, if I remember right. And, uh, you know, like when you get a guy like that, that doesn't care and is just going to come in there and full send, um, you know, don't blink because uh, anything can happen at any moment. But uh, Julian Gomez, one thing you'll notice with all the Twilla mixed martial arts guys, they're all extremely tough. Like they, they that's, a, that's a culture they breed there. And so um, Ben's excitement mixed with the Julian's and, you know, the whole Twilla fight camps, that, that grit, um, I, I think could make for a very exciting fight. Julian Gomez with five years of wrestling under the belt. Okay, we will move over to the welterweight division. Dos San Leon facing off against Calvin Taylor, the older brother of Max Taylor, who we just talked about a few moments ago. Calvin Taylor, two knockdowns in 67 seconds in his debut just a few months ago, Zach. Um, this uh, could be early fight of the night prediction, I think. Um, Calvin's very exciting. I, I train very closely with Cal- Calvin uh, at our gym. Um like uh like you said he had a very impressive debut um beat Spencer Hansen who Spencer came out and showed you know pretty good like that that's a that's a that's a win that that, that that aged well for Calvin for him to make this walk he's extremely athletic and explosive do sim do swan liam do son leon as for now my man boom. jackson hubs boom don't trust jackson um you never know. Uh, but the one thing that I'm I'm really interested in, uh, Dos, uh, Dos on his first fight that he lost was a really tough decision to Lane Dalton, who we know how tough Lane Dalton is because him and Tyler Call had a fantastic fight at our Challenger Series last September in Farmington. Um, I watched that whole fight. Very impressive wrestling, tough grit. Like, I just... He's a tough guy. Calvin has a good wrestling background, good athlete. I think this could be a very, very exciting fight. Lane Dalton already three and one. Dosan Leon been facing really, really tough names at the kickstart of his career. I think, I think we'll see Lane Dalton in a fierce cage again very soon. We would absolutely love it. All right, we will move over to Lars Wittenberger facing off against Nate Reinhardt. Lars Wittenberger, his fourth fight in 10 months. As for Nate, he's won his last two in a row and done so in dominant fashion. Yeah, um, I think this is the perfect test for both of them. I think I believe they're both two and one. Um, Lars made his debut for us up in Idaho last June, and um, and you know Nate's Nate's kind of you know he just last fought in Idaho in January, so um, Nate's active. Um, Lars has been active, um, and one thing I think the winner of this fight will really kind of propel themselves into that top tier of Bantamweights in the state or be more recognized. Um, I I'm very high on Nate and where he can go in this sport. I think talent wise, he probably already is one of the top tier Bantamweights, but now, now he probably get recognized with as such with a win over Lars. But um, we didn't know much about Lars last time. Turns out like he's pretty tough. Um, well-rounded, comes from a big, good camp at Extreme Couture. I think that'll be a really good fight. Clocked in about three years over at Extreme Couture is Lars Wittenberg. Excited for that one. All right, first of four title fights on the line, a Extreme Couture versus a Gima Jiu-Jitsu and MMA matchup between Bane Barner and Giovanni Salazar. Zach, this one is going to be so much fun. Bane after, back after 11 months away. As for Giovanni Salazar, one of the highest-touted prospects in the amateur divisions down in Vegas. This, I mean, this is everything a title fight wants to be. I think Gio wants to go pro after this fight if it goes his way. He's about right there, you know, like he's he's pretty dang good. Like I, I've kind of been watching Gio for a little bit. He was supposed to come up and fight on our Challenger Series last May in, in Orem, Utah. So now he's coming to make the walk at UVU in Orem, Utah. Um, pretty excited uh, to see him. Bane, man. I think everybody wants to see Bane. I th- the only thing I want to see more of Bane is him a little more active. So I'm just excited he's getting in there. But I'm really excited because um, I think 170 is the correct weight class for Bane. And um, I think he's gotten really serious about his diet and his nutrition. And, um, you know, I think 170 suits him well. I think he at that weight, he's going to be able to move a little bit better. He's He's kind of unassuming when you look at him, like, I, I don't know if people realize how good he is when you just look at him, but man, obviously, as we saw with his knockout, um, when he fought last for us, um, good knockout power, 
And um, I mean, I've heard people like Alden Ashcroft say, Bane gives me some of my toughest rounds in the room. And, you know, Alden's a stud. So I'm very interested to see, you know, how this fight plays out and um, who initiates the grappling, who tries to keep it on the feet. Uh, pretty, I feel like a pretty good 50 50 fight for a title fight. All right, we go from the welterweight division over to the bantamweight division, another amateur title on the line between Artis Lyles and Jackson Gray. We haven't seen Artis Lyles in a while, but since he's been away from the fierce cage, he has gone on a four fight win streak. As for Jackson Gray, obviously been dominant through these last couple of wins, getting his hand raised. You know, Jackson, um, let's see, Jackson getting a good win in September against a very tough Ben McNeil. And then, and then, and then taking on Kevin Guo, Kevin took that on a little bit shorter notice. If I recall that right. I want to, I believe um, Jackson had to overcome a little adversity, got dropped in the first round of that fight, came back and was very, very impressive. I, I think Jackson's a stud man. Um, and I, you know what I really love? I love that he's defending his title. So we can see so many amateurs, win the belt and then instantly go pro. I really, I really like that Jackson's not rushing that and at least getting one title defense in there. But I think skill wise, he's, he's pretty dang close to there. And, you know, artist knows where he stacks up. It, when you train at those big camps, those guys, you already know where you stack up with pros because they're, they're trading next to him. And some of the you know, UFC caliber guys every day and artist has just gotten better and better and better. I've watched him since his very first amateur fight and He's good everywhere. He's tough. He's fundamentally sound. Uh, I I think um, I'm very interested to see how this fight plays out and see if artists can execute some of that grappling that he, he likes uh, to execute in this fight or if Jackson can get him to engage in, in just a pure kickboxing match like Jackson really likes to do. That is going to be an absolute barn burner to headline the prelims. I did want to ask you, if Jackson were to win this, are you alluding that he will most likely go oh. pro after this one, or do you have any insight? Nope, I don't. I, I I don't have any insight on that. I'm not speaking for him. I'm just saying from what I see, there, there are things that when you watch some of these amateurs, um, you can kind of tell when they're close to getting ready. Um, but – you know, him and his team will make that decision when they're ready. I don't know. Maybe he plans on fighting three or four times as an amateur. But I will tell you this. Um, if he keeps this belt and he does stay amateur, he it's, he's he's going to get into that. Uh, you, you, you get When you get to the top as an amateur, you're fighting so many guys that are so tough anyways. It gets to the point where it's like, why am I doing this for free? You know what I mean? If I'm going to tell, if I'm going to fight these, these level of guys, like, I might as well get going on my pro career for it and not saying that Jackson has hit that where there's nobody for him other than, you know, but Jackson's pretty dang good. It's going to get, if he beats Artis and does what he goes out there and wants to do, he's going to be pretty tough to, to find, you know, guys that are lining up to fight him. I think. All right, we will move from Amy to Pro, the main card available for pay-per-view purchase at FierceFightingChampionship.com. It's going to be Arthur DeFlew facing off against David Maggio. David Maggio back after quite some time away. As for Arthur DeFlew, a freaky fast finisher, he has a minute and 45 seconds of cage time in three professional fights, Zach. And, and quick submissions, right? I mean, Arthur is a good, good jiu-jitsu player. You know, I, I don't want to say just a jujitsu guy because I think he he's more well well rounded than that and and don't want to disrespect the other parts of my game, but a very very good jujitsu guy and, and Majo is a very good jujitsu guy in his own right as well. Um, good grappler coming from Jeremy Horn's gym. Stylistically, I think it's fun because I think both of these fighters will engage in each other's strengths, and um, I don't know. I just I see this playing out as just a really fun fight. I I. I anticipate it going a little bit longer than Arthur's used to. Um, but we'll see. Um, I know I'm interested to see Maggio, how he comes back after the long layoff. Um, he had a pretty serious injury in that time and um, see if he's back to hundred percent. 
All right, we will move from 145 down to 125. I'm not paid to give my opinion by any means, but I do have to say this would be my pick for fight of the night. Mauro Gutierrez facing off against Austin Strail. Strail back after 18 months away. As for Mauro, he's one of the most active guys in the entire state. Not just in MMA, he is doing everything. Every single weekend, it seems like he's scheduled to compete in something, Zach. Gives me anxiety, man. He's just doing Naga. Uh, he's fighting on the 20th. And very next weekend, he's fighting it or competing at PGI in a, in a purple belt bracket, uh, jujitsu, no gi jujitsu competition. The kid just loves to compete. Um, this was a match that just like, it had to happen. Um, kind of talked about maybe putting it off and seeing if we could get them to, to fight for a belt maybe later this year, but at the same time, nothing's guaranteed in this sport. So I wanted to see the fight. Um, they're both down for it. I think it's a really fun fight. I, I have yet to see a human being be able to keep up with Austin Strail's pace, but if there's anybody that's going to be able and conditioned enough to do that, it's going to be somebody like Mauro. So um, very, very fascinating to see if what wins um, Austin's athleticism, pace, pressure, or Mauro's, you know, technique, fight IQ, awareness to blend all of his different martial arts together beautifully like he does. Um, I think for the pros, Pro probably my fight of the night. All right, next one on deck. It's going to be Theo Dukas versus Cole Schaefer. We will also get that pronunciation right before the broadcast on Saturday night. Yeah, I mean, I and and at light heavyweight, uh, right? Like they we agreed on opponents. Um, there was a little miscommunication on what weight it would be at, and uh, it was nice because you know what what's really nice is when when camps are honest and upfront about where their fighters are at, it makes it a lot. Uh, less stressful when when weight is being decided on uh what weight class to fight at you know cole schaefer's last opponent came in super heavy and didn't take a lot of accountability for it and it was really a frustrating situation so for theo to come in probably be a little too heavy to make middleweight even though he probably should be a middleweight um at least they were honest up front about it cole schaefer didn't have to cut a whole bunch of weight and uh you know i think we're i think we're in for a good fight i think um, we're really going to see kind of, you know, it's a nice little step up for Cole too, from, from his last fight, see where he's at, get him going and see where he's at. If he can get going in the right direction, um, and keep start stacking up some wins versus Theo, who's, you know, I think he's just kind of, he's older trying to, trying to kind of figure out what his MMA path is going to look like. You mentioned the weight class, Cole Schaefer, four and one at light heavyweight. We will see how that one plays good. between those two. Here's the thing. Cole's just pretty dang good. So, I mean, when it comes to wrestling, he's top of the food chain. So, I don't really think it matters too much weight class. I think Cole just goes out and Cole does what he does. Theo's going to come in, try and catch him. It, I, it's going to be an interesting fight. All right, next up, we've got Jesse Salmon facing off against Chris Chu at 195 pounds. Chris Chu jumping up from amateur to pro. He's got a big test in front of him on nine days notice, Zach. I mean, I, I, I posted about it last night. This is the type of stuff that, like, that makes me love this job and love this sport. Um, Chris has been asking to go pro for a while, but, you know, this is a good lesson, too. Like, um, Having a social media matters, which Chris recently got good for Chris. Um, ticket sales matter to a promotion. I know some fighters think that it's all about, you know, just fighting and stuff, but unfortunately in 2024, like there's more to it than that. And promoting your fights with um, uh, on social media and letting people know that you're part of a promotion and you're part of a show. And, you know, this is a team effort to build something together. That stuff matters. And um, that's an area that, that Chris kind of needed to improve on in it, and it limits it opportunities. But it's also the type of, like Chris jumped at this opportunity. I'm not kidding. I think he texted me within 10 minutes of that being posted, asking if he could step into fight. And I get freaking goosebumps on my arms uh, thinking about it because Jesse Salmon did the same thing in November for Eric Iman. You know, it's just good karma. Um, and I'm just so grateful that Chris was – you know, I'm willing that Jesse did it with for Eric back in November. And I'm grateful that Chris is now returning the favor in the MMA world. And, and Chris, um, he's been, you know, he won an opportunity to go pro for a while. 
and um just to test himself like a true martial artist and we already saw like he's tough as nails it's a it, and it's an interesting interesting fight you know, you mentioned Jesse. I think of Kerry Latimer back in January. I think now of Chris Chu. When these types of people step in on these short notice fights, the stock rises. I mean, every single comment was just praising Chris Chu for stepping in because everybody knows that Jesse's had fights fall off in the past. He stepped in on late notice in the past as well. So it's good to see that all come together that way. It's yeah, it's it's really cool. I mean, you just you respect it so much. And and again, it's like MMA is a is the purest form of competition. And man, you know, there are so many fighters that say that they want to fight or whatever. And then they just want to be on a poster, but like, man, there's some dudes, they just really want to fight. And when they, and they, they mean it, they mean they'll fight anybody. Like they just want to test themselves. They want to compete. They want to, you know, you know, they, they want the, the, the platform, the stage, the opportunity, whatever it is that motivates them. Like they're really about it. And then there, there's some that they just aren't. And, uh, but now, you know, like when somebody does something like this, when Jesse Salmon steps in or when Chris Chu steps in, it's like, you know, you now, you know, exactly what that person's about. All right. Dan, Daniel Trejo, I apologize. Facing off against Kent Mafileo, the former fierce FC heavyweight champion. Kent right back into the lab. As for Daniel Trejo, all of his wins by force first or second round finish. It's going to be a fun one between these two heavyweights. Yeah, I mean, we know Dan, right? I called his his fight against uh, Zach Cavender at Fierce, what, back in 2021, 2020, 2021? Uh, and, you know, if you watch Dan's last fight, he looks like a very undersized heavyweight. Man, he doesn't fight like one. Like, he comes in and he throws bombs and he's there to, and he was there for all of it, his last fight. He threw bombs, he got the takedown, he beat him up uh on the ground and and got his hand raised he's on a two fight win streak um up up for the challenge to fight can't do he raised his hand he's like i'll fight I'll, i i want to fight for you guys and we were talking about what what weight class and he's like i'll fight one more at heavyweight and then i'll drop down to 205 and uh but most people are they kind of want to go to 205 to kind of get away from the cat mafaleos and the zeke latus of the world and Dan's like, no, my last heavyweight fight, I'll fight Kent. Like, I'm here for it. So uh, props to Dan. Um, interested to see what Kent looks like. Um, I think a lot of people worry about things that aren't as big of a deal. And people got to remember, yeah, Kent lost, and that was his first loss as a pro. Like, he's lost as an amateur before. He knows how to come back from this stuff. So I'm, I, I think we're going to see a very, very sharp, good version of Kent. All right, first professional title on the line. It's going to be Hamza Salim facing off against Jerome Hatch. Hamza Salim, a three-time Bellator vet. As for Jerome Hatch, trying to get back on track. He had 10 fights in the UCCU Center back in the day for showdown. Excited to have him back in his backyard. Yeah, I mean, Jerome, this is this is his, what he feels like is his stomping grounds. This is where he thrives. And I know he's very, very excited to be back at the UCCU Center. But more importantly, he's excited to get his hand raised. Um, you know, people, when people point out like, you know, drums lost a couple fights, haven't had to go in his way. They're all title fights too, though. You know, like when people are like, oh, he doesn't have it anymore or whatever. I'm not talking, they're saying about Jerome. I'm talking in general, but when fighters go on these skids, but they're fighting the best in their weight class around, it's like, yeah, sometimes that the, they fall off a little bit, you know? And, and then it all comes down to confidence and, and mental toughness. Um, and I think that's something that Jerome has an incredible internal belief and um and a lot of mental toughness. I think I think Jerome's gonna look back to old old form, you know. Everybody knows what he's looking for. He's looking to put one of those huge overhands on somebody's face on their chin and put them out. Um I don't know. I think I I think somebody gets knocked out. I don't think it goes to decision. That's what we want. We want finishes. So that's what that's what we have to look forward to in that co-main event for the uh, light heavyweight title. All right. Final pair to make the walk. It's going to be Trent Miller and the fierce FC middleweight champion, Mike Jones, a 100% finish rate between these two, 10 finishes, 10 wins for Mike Jones. As for Trent Miller, a little bit less tread on the tires, five wins, five finishes as a professional. Man, it's super interesting. Cause you know, I would have to say, you know, first hope a speedy recovery, recovery to Greg Ellis, but you know, when 
when somebody gives you a, a solution to one of your problems, uh, you take it. And Trent Miller was that solution to Greg Ellis having to pull out. And, you know, he, he asked for this opportunity and for him, what a, it's a big spot. I mean, if you look at the guys that he's fought, uh, I believe the only person as a pro he's fought with a winning record is two and one. Um, this is a big jump for Trent. But again, what it, I just talked about it earlier, these guys at these big camps at Extreme Couture, he knows where he stacks up. He's sparring with Sean Strickland, Chris Curtis, Francis Ngannou, like he talked about on the podcast with you. Like he's training with these guys. He knows where he stacks up. One thing to do it in the training room, it's another thing to go out and do it in in a main event, big venue, you know, all eyes on you type moment too, where, you know, Mike's, Mike's been there. Like he's, he's fought a lot of big names and, and a lot of really good guys. It's um, the experience level is to me is the most interesting storyline of this fight. Um, you know, Mike, Mike is a vet that's been around a long time and he's somebody that I think doesn't get enough respect and is, is forgotten a little bit in the state of Utah of kind of like, you know, one of the mainstay guys in Utah. He's, he's fought a lot of guys and doesn't say no to anybody. So, I'm very interested to see, you know, how this fight plays out. I'm very interested to see where it plays out uh, on the feet. If Trent tries to get it to the ground, ever, I've always heard that Mike's best thing is his wrestling, but I haven't really seen it a whole time, you know? So I, I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I think it's a great main event. It's a great way to cap off an incredible show at UVU returning uh, to the UCCU Center. 15 fights, a historic event taking place on Saturday night at the UCCU Center in Orem, Utah. Doors open at four, fights start at five. Zach, it is going to be a wonderful night. Cannot wait for it. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.